Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. Today I'm joined by my brother Justin. Hey. We're going to be out and we're going to be doing bushcrafting. We're cooking on a shovel. We're making a stone oven. We're doing all this the old way. Stick with us. That is red bud. Super pretty. Probably a mountain lion track. I don't like to call it on one track, but you can see this ridge up here in the front. A dog track will come to a point right there. And that right there is a wild turkey track. Last time we were down here, this stream was bone dry. It was the 48-hour uh, wasteland survival challenge. But it's flowing this year because we finally got some rain. I'm gonna dig down right here in the gravel and I'm gonna bury our eggs, our milk, and our cheese. And that way, when it's down in the wet gravel there, it should stay nice and cool because it's about 85 to 90 degrees today. We're gonna use stones and native clay right out of the creek bank like that. And we're gonna make ourselves a wild oven. Check out how hot that is. That's just been sitting out in the sun. Oh yeah. It's like 100 degrees. Yeah. I almost cook on that right now. <laughs> nice flat stones here. That's why we came. Perishables are right here. We're going to just build it up so it stays nice and cool. Not cold, but definitely cooler. My brother's gathering up stones. This is our camp. But Justin just found this one. Um, it's in the mud, so it's a little bit damp, but we're gonna use this as the foundation that the pizza actually sits on, because the plan is to make duck pizza in an earth oven. And then we'll build our oven off of this. And Justin was also saying, so this one is wet, so there's not a high likelihood of something being underneath it, but he was saying that if you were gonna pick something like this up and it was high and dry, since it's angled this way and it's open on this side, you want to pick it up and move it away from yourself and that way if there's a rattlesnake under it, it'll strike that way and you have a shield in between you and the snake. It's got roots in it and stuff already. It's not too wet. Very nice dude. Yep. The oven is finished and my brother's getting a pile of wood together. We're going to start a little fire over here using a ferro rod. We'll show you how we do that. Once we get that down to coals, we're going to bring that over here and we're going to start warming the oven. And that way, theoretically, the rocks will slowly come up to temperature and not explode. If we can start to build some heat, we're going to build a proper fire in here. And then we're going to roast a duck that my buddy Luke shot earlier in the season. And we're going to rehydrate some black trumpet mushrooms that Diane and I foraged in the woods this last season. And then we're going to make some wild pizza. We've got a little brace in the back to keep the kindling up off the tinder when you first light it. And then we've got really fine tinder, grass, small twigs. So, you know, you think about how easy it is to light a match. You're trying to light match size kindling first and then work your way up to bigger stuff. This is a ferro rod that's glued to a piece of um, uh, resin impregnated wood. So you can scrape up some of it like this, the back of the saw. That's what that pile of stuff is right there. Wow. So that's fat wood shavings, huh? Yeah. And we're gonna try not to use it today because you want to practice with materials that you can find and not always depend on it. And actually, Around here, you, you won't find this stuff. Like these gray pines, for some reason, they don't make um, fat wood. So you, you, they make a ton of sap, and you can use that sap, you can like mix it in with something like this, and if this is dry, it might not be too hard to light. This is that cottonwood bark we harvested. 
So try it like this. There it goes. And I'll put that right here. We'll get our grass. And we'll put that on here. Um, and see how it's like kind of supported by this. Uh, and then we want to move quickly because you don't want to use up all your small stuff before you get your big stuff going. Yeah, if that were brown grass, there's absolutely no way we would be having a fire right there. <laughs> not yeah, a chance. Like 10 feet of ground and you'd still maybe not have a fire. Yep. needles from a gray pine and so I'm going to tie it right here and then we're going to cut it so that it's all square on the end and then we'll have a brush for cleaning off the pizza stone. There you go. got a wild mallard from a few months back, vacuum sealed and given to us by my good buddy Luke. Something he hunted this last season. Plastic cutting board is definitely not the right aesthetic. It's done, man. Yep. Okay. Cool. You want to try it? Oh, this is this is about to pop loose. All right. It's very nicely cooked, man. It's hot. You got any salt? I do. Let's do some salt first. Going for it. Bro. Dude. Mmm. Oh man. That is really good, dude. Okay, hang on, hang on. You gotta try this, dude. That's amazing. Yeah, it's very good. It's uh tastes like duck, but it doesn't have any of the like liver flavor that you get sometimes if it's overcooked. I think it was probably like cooking at 200 degrees most of the time and then we built the fire up at the end and cooked it a little bit hotter, but it's very good. Hopefully the breast is as good as the legs are. Mm hmm It's cold in every like 15 minutes. It was quite... Mm. Yeah, it's really good. I was a little bit afraid we'd overcook it. It would taste like liver, because that can happen with duck. But I think because we cooked it slow, that didn't happen. It's probably cooked like medium well, but um, it was like you know roasted in the oven for three hours, so it's pretty good. I don't have any complaints. It's very good. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. We gotta put that on pizza. These are the black trumpets rehydrating. And then here we've got our wild mustard greens and some green onion and garlic. pizza. I have a feeling this is going to come out like the ugliest pizza in the world and it's probably going to taste amazing. All right, going for it. Duck calzone.
Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. It tastes way better than it looks. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> it's cooked perfectly. I mean, it looks super funny, but the crust is all cooked right. All the ingredients are like the cheese is melted. The inside of the crust is cooked. Duck is cooked perfectly. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, should have built it on the shovel, didn't. We're making calzones. It's gonna be a lot easier, I think. We're just gonna flip this thing over and we'll just seal up the edges, I suppose. Like a pro. Seems like the calzone's <laughs> the way to go here. <laughs> We're, bushcraft is all about flexibility, okay? <laughs> so we're just gonna take a look. All right, round two, calzone. Look at that. Gooey cheese, mushrooms. Bro, that's gonna be so good. Mmm. 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 They came out great. They're really good. Yeah, man. Nice work. Dude. Mmm. Dude, that oven works. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. Kind of figured it out. <laughs> this is something that we've been talking about doing for like years now. And, uh, you know, it takes a little, a little finesse. We kind of had to tinker with it a little to get the heat right, but. Yeah, surrounding, well, we put the, the calzone on a stone. And it was like a couple inches thick, so it was up off the bottom. And we preheated the stone, and then we surrounded the stone, stone with coals. And that was really what kind of gave it an even cook. Yeah, it's working beautifully now. <laughs> That's the last of the green, so we're just gonna put that right in the middle, I guess. Yeah. That's a pizza. All right, we don't just make calzones out here in these woods. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning.
asked, do you have any like bush crafty kind of muffin paper koozie things? And they were like, yeah, these are the manliest. Starting to rise. Oh, they are starting to rise. That's nice. I'm just about to rotate these, but they are growing into muffins. Okay. All right, they're getting there. A little bit of char. That's just part of cooking the old way. What a cool camp, man. Yeah, we've done some cool stuff out here. Bro, every single time we come here, I'm like, this is the coolest spot and the coolest adventure, but I love that we continually kind of step it up, man. Yeah. So, my thoughts on the ghillie kettle. Um, it is really cool. It is an old school design, I guess about a hundred years old. Not a lot of volume in the inside because it's got that chimney that's got all the, the wood and fire going through it, but that's why it heats up so quick. Um, we got about two big coffee mugs of coffee out of one kettle. So it may not be the one that you want to use to like purify all of your water for a bushcraft outing, but like for making coffee, tea, this thing is pretty darn cool. It's like an old school jet boil. Ooh, and it's still hot. No. Okay. It should be done soon. The back side has got a little bit of char on it. I slid it a little bit closer to the door. Okay. That's hair on the blade. So yeah, these are nice stones to bring camping with you if you think you're going to do some blade touch up in the field. Falcon DC4. So you've got a diamond edge that's kind of, I think it's a coarser edge or a coarser side to bring up um, an edge quickly. And then you've got, um, I think they're ceramic, but they might be natural stone uh, side to put like a finer edge on your blade. And then the, the outside of the sheath, you rub stropping compound on, and then you can strop the edge to get it real, real um, smooth. Uh, they look a little sunken in the middle, man. That's done, man. That's done. Nice, man. Stone oven. That's a corn muffin. Mm. Mm hmm. Cut firewood. You might have had an outside cooking. Beautiful. We used very little stuff on this trip. We did almost, I mean, we used the shovel a ton. We used a little bit of cordage, um, but that was pretty much it. Yeah, they're pretty much sunny side up right there. Yep. Bacon, eggs, cornmeal muffins. The shovel has come in handy like crazy. The handle broke while it was out here, so he burned out the old handle, stuck a new one in it, wrapped it up with cordage, all of that while I was out of camp. So, yeah, a shovel is definitely a good thing to have, and it's super lightweight, so it really doesn't take up much space, but it's very useful. As you can see, you can cook your eggs and bacon on it. Everything came out perfect. Eggs are perfect. Bacon's cooked good. Cornmeal muffins are all cooked through. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We baked calzone, we baked pizza, we baked muffins. Roasted a duck. Roasted a duck. So as an oven, it functioned quite well. Baked clay. Justin's pine needle brush sure worked. That'll go back to the earth as well.
All right, thank you for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. We love hearing back from you. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. Now, when you're doing this at home, you need to make sure that your shovel is well flowered. <laughs> we always use our knives to shave our arms. <laughs> yeah, my wife always can tell if I've been like geeking out in bushcraft stuff or not because I won't have any hair on one arm. <laughs> said he likes to uh, season his camp cookware with bacon grease, especially his good old cooking shovel. 